What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Hold Husband Podcast. I'm your host, Terry Duran. I got both of my co-hosts with me in the building. Uh, I got my man, Jay Baba. What's good, bro? Not much, man. Glad to be back on here with you fellas here. But if you haven't already, you want to make sure you're subscribing to us on YouTube, as well as follow us on TikTok at Hold Husband Podcast. Also, want to shout out to give a shout out to Jamaica and Ghana. You know, we're ranked from podcast, uh, a podcast on there. So shout out to them for those who listen. And, and shout out to all the people listening to us overseas. You see, we got a following out up. there. Uh, I also got my other co-host. I got my man SD. What's good with you? Nothing, man. Doing my usual. But I want to give a shout out to um, both the black quarterbacks for the first time ever in the NFL going to the yes, Super Bowl. Sir. Let's get them my right. hand out here, man. You know what it is. So um, after that, bombs. <laughs> yeah, after that, I want to give a shout out to Brother Soul Productions for always keeping the background audio fresh. And I want to remind you all to donate to the Hold a Husband podcast on Cash App and PayPal. Uh, I want to remind everybody, y'all can catch the audio playback of the podcast every Monday afternoon at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time on the core 94com uh, we got an interesting episode tonight. Tonight's episode is titled Mountain of Excuses. Uh, and we're going to talk, we'll be talking about the um, relationship problems that men and women bring into relationships. Uh, but y'all know how we do it around here on the Hold a Husband podcast. We, we like to discuss stuff we've seen on our timelines or things that have been trending. Uh, and so we're going to start out with a video that has recently went viral uh, regarding women submitting to men. Uh, let's take a listen. A lot of you ladies will go to hell and back for the wrong man, but even the thought of giving submissive energy to a good man is like cringeworthy to y'all. And the select women who are happily submissive always seem to be ostracized by friends, family, and women looking in from the outside. Secretly, they hate to see a happy, cohesive relationship because they've never been taught it themselves. A lot of y'all can't submit because you're too damn selfish to surrender, period. Y'all will yield to your boss, your pastor, your father, etc. But then put up a damn fight when it comes to yielding to your man. And the ironic part is it takes an extremely strong woman to submit, to put her ego to the side and understand and realize that it's not all about her. Now, I, I think that video is going to hurt some feelings, man. Uh, I agree with, with pretty much everything that she said. Uh, I don't know why so many women have uh, such a negative perspective of the word submission. Um, but I know just bringing it up in conversation, um, you'll see women use words with a negative connotation in regards to it. Dictator, controlling, things of that nature. Uh, when a man could just simply be pro providing guidelines or ways to, to be more efficient or more effective as a household, a lot of women will rebel against that. And, 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 I, and I've seen a lot of women will reject things just because it came from a man. Um, so I, I don't under, really understand that because in a healthy relationship, a man's logic and decision making is there to override her emotional decision making. Um, but it's mm -hmm. something that a lot of women are resistant to. I think um, I think a lot of women um, look at it negatively because of how they saw their grandmoms and moms mm -hmm. come up too. because, you know, back <clears throat> then you talk about back in the day where they couldn't really work. They couldn't really do a whole lot out here. So they had to kind of sit under a man and really move how that man really told them to move or allowed them to move in a lot of cases because they didn't really have finances for a lot of things. So I think that's why a lot of women look at it negatively because they never really seen it. And, and a lot of the grandmoms and moms was miserable in the process, right? So now you got a lot making of women a making it, yeah, for, for the family or whatever the case. And now you got a lot of women making their own money and they saying, nah, I'm not going to be submissive to no man. Not understanding that that is a key component to a healthy relationship when you want a masculine man and, and all of those types of things. That's a healthy component when, when done right. Now, no, you shouldn't be a doormat where somebody just walking all over you and just doing right. whatever they want to do. And you just like, <clears throat> yes, yes, sir. Whatever you like, sir. Like, no, it ain't like that. You know what I mean? If it's done, if it's done healthy and he knows how to lead properly. So I think a lot of women are looked at their grandmoms and moms and paying too much attention to social media and the mm -hmm. negative uh, 
connotation that it gets on social media for being submissive to a man but the problem is that men still that's one major thing that most men want from a woman yeah that's what they looking for no. absolutely so no no doubt i mean i think what it is here is a lot of women still consider submissive a bad word a dirty word consider it to be taboo but like i said she'll submit to everything else she'll submit to a job you know if they change the rules the job change the dollar she's going to follow that and there will be no questions asked and think about this for a second mm -hmm. a job isn't going to invest in they'll pay you but they're not going to invest in you the way a man would if a man's looking to get in a serious relationship and marry you he's looking to invest in you now speaking mm -hmm. for quality man i'm not i'm not talking about you know the fuck boys the poofy race i'm not talking about those but the quality man they're looking to invest in a woman so why right. not submit to them well, I, I think that's that's also a reflection of the dating decisions a lot of women are yeah. making. Because when you talk, it's it's really annoying because any discussion you have with women, they only bring up the worst version of men, right? Right. Um, the bums, the dead beasts, the dudes with no job, the dudes mm -hmm. that are insecure, etc. And it, and it's it's like, well, if you're if you're a man that really got your shit together and you actually have a healthy mentality and the way that you operate is conducive to raising a family and a household, then those are the type of men that you should be trying to, to benefit from their mm -hmm. logic and their decision making. Because yeah. it's easy to observe a woman's choices or her behavior and figure out how she can improve or where she's going wrong. The same way that a woman can point out things that a man can improve on. Um, yeah. And I, I don't think, I don't see how you can have a, be with somebody that you say you love and you're trying to build with where you don't actively use their criticism or feedback to try to improve the situation. Yeah. And what's crazy <clears throat> is that, you know, a lot of, a lot of women and men too, don't look at it uh, from the, from both sides of the fence when it comes to being submissive or submitting to your partner because men do it also men actually submit first in in, in interaction yeah. with a woman because the definition is to accept or yield to the superior force authority or the will of another person and as men we know the will of women is for us to approach them because most of them won't approach us so we go and we approach a woman and ask her for a number. That's us submitting to the will of that woman. When that woman want to go out on a date and, and expects the man to pay, most men do it, right? That's the will of a woman, and we know it. Uh, the will of a woman is for a man to be a gentleman and open up her door to the, to the restaurant or to the car. Right. And guess what we do? As men, we submit to it's that your best person. interest. Before exactly because we want something from this woman, her time, her energy, and her sex, whatever the case. So we actually do the submitting first, thus teaching because we the leaders, teaching this woman how how to do it. But it, it should be in her attitude also as a woman to be submissive to that man's superior force for him being physically stronger. So that woman shows him that respect. Those are things that women do out of need because they 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 need protection from men most women will tell you the things that they want from a man is provision uh protection and leadership right those mm -hmm. things that women want from men so they do the submission out of necessity because he's a superior force to them and the authority figure within the household but if it's done properly it's going to be healthy on both ends it don't mean that you're a doormat it don't mean that he's a, mm -hmm. a, a dictator that tell you what to do and he tell you to jump and you say how high that's not how that should go well, you know right go ahead jay right no i said but that's what women think they they yeah. take submission as oh well i'm not gonna i'm not a slave yeah that's what you hear yeah, a lot right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, like I said, it's always an extreme negative. Yeah. And it's like, well, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I mean, that's not our the idea of what a healthy relationship exactly. looks like in any means. Um, like, like my man says something like, okay, jump off of, of a sky ride, jump off a high rise, or jump off a sky rise, right? Any reasonable person will be like, no, I'm not going to do that. That's, that's just stupid, right? So it's like you said, it's not when you say submit, it's not jump how high. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you man. Know what? I, I will, I and me being single, right? Mm -hmm. I will not talk to a woman or even entertain a woman that has a problem with the word submissive. I won't even entertain her. I'll cut her off right away. 
because that's, something, mine, that's something you bring up like in the first couple conversations or the first yeah, couple dates. I, I ask them what do they think about it and if they need if they feel like they need a man. If you tell me if you got a problem with the word submissive, you'll you'll have a problem with the actions of the word. And right. if you have a problem saying you need a man or feeling like you need a man, you gonna behave like you don't need a man. And you're gonna be combative. Yep. And you're going to be unpleasant to deal with. I don't care what you say, but if you got a problem, it's like me as a man having a problem with the word uh, being a leader. A leader? What's a leader? Uh, protection provider. Like, anything. A woman. Why I got to pay to be? Like, yeah, woman, <laughs> right. like, what do you mean? That's Why I got to protect you, know? you from any kind of danger? <laughs> a man, right? That's your position. And as a woman, that's your position to your man to be submit to submit to your man. It's your position. Because it's just being agreeable, cooperative, and pleasant to be around. That's that's really all it is. And let your man do his man thing. Because you trust in him with your body. You'll sleep with him unprotected. But you won't trust him enough to make the correct decisions for y'all as a couple. Yeah. That's backwards. So if, yeah, if a woman yeah. ain't with that and she don't like it, I don't want nothing to do with her. Bottom line, I don't care how she feel about it. Call me whatever she wants. So that's just... <laughs> All right, man, let's keep the ball rolling. Now, uh, this next video that we're gonna talk about, um, I saw this and it really uh, caught me by surprise. Um, it was a woman uh, giving women insight into what it's like to actually date wealthy men uh, and some of the negative sides that come along with it. Let's take a listen. I'm gonna tell you exactly why, despite the fact that you might wanna be with a rich man, you're actually not cut out for it. I went to lunch the other day with one of my friends who's getting married to a very wealthy guy and she was talking about how unhappy she is in her relationship and the primary reason is because this man works all the time and her love language is quality time mind you sis is sitting there doused in chanel and louis vuitton that he bought for her and i told her i was like if this is the lifestyle that you want the chanel the nice house the maids the cars the luxury items then somebody has to go work for it and you gotta ask yourself do i want a man who's sitting next to me giving me quality time home by 5 p.m doesn't travel you know just like up my ass the entire time or if I want a man who's making money and if he's making money he just naturally is not gonna have time for you like that now no way am I saying find someone who neglects you but there's just natural things that come with this lifestyle that I had to learn myself and I'd be lying to you if I told you it isn't a lonely life now watching this video it, it kind of went off I could never figure out right Women are constantly talking about they want the luxury lifestyle, they want the mansion, they want the, the Rolls Royces and the maids and all this type of stuff. But we see women divorce those type of men. We see billion dollar divorces, multi-million dollar divorces, etc. So obviously that's not the key to having a healthy relationship. And I think she hit it on the head, um, among other things. Obviously a man that's out getting money around the world, flying private and all that type of thing, he is gonna be gone away from home a lot. He's also going to be attracting an awful lot of attention from other women. So I think that's another component that makes that, that type of situation not ideal for most women because they're too insecure to deal with that type of man. You know what I figured out, man, just being on social media and talking to so many women. A lot of them you just can't please no matter what you do. <laughs> it, it don't matter what you do, man. Like, <laughs> you know... And, and I asked the women this, man. Like, um, if you know, and, and we know how a lot of women's feelings are and their emotions, bro. It changed like this. It changed with the wind, with the weather, with the words, with mm -hmm. different things. So, you know, it, it, if it was reversed and he's at home all the time, she'd be complaining that he around her too much or don't True. make enough money or he ain't a man and all this here stuff. But then when he is making all of this your money, and that's when the woman actually like him if she bored and she like, yo, I want to spend time with my man. Most of these women that's with these these rich dudes like that, they don't really care because they got a dude on the side that's a felon that just got out that's wearing their back out <laughs> while, while, while my man running around doing whatever and flying around town that he ain't got time for. As long as they getting what they want, uh, most women will be quiet to it. You know what I'm saying? Like yep. uh, the girl that's dating Diddy, I forgot her name, the rapper chick. Uh, Young Miami. Yeah, like she's she's perfect. Did he give her two hundred grand a month? And she fine with him having babies, 
being out with six other women, like a lot of women will be okay with that and be like, hey man, look, I'm getting what I want. It's worth it. She says she got her sneaky link on the side that she gets her, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, and do her thing with. Like most women will do that for the money. And look, you know, so you're gonna have to sacrifice look, something dealing with a rich man. Exactly. What is up to you? Exactly. You know, I mean, you know, you know what it is with, with, with like women here? They like you know, luxury stuff, what it looks like, but not what it takes, what it feels like, what it takes to actually be with that kind of man. Yeah. Like you said, sacrifices got to be made. He's not going to be home all the time. Hell, there might be a lot of times he might not be home, but that's the sacrifice you've got to make to be with that kind of man to live that lifestyle that you want, that you want to live. You know, and hey, listen, I don't make a million dollars, but if you're somebody who's driven and who's on your grind all the time, hell, there's going to be times you're still not going to be home. Even as yep. just the average, just a regular <laughs> guy, the average Joe. Shit. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, because because on a on a a smaller level, you see that with, with just average guys. The guys that are making 100, 100 k plus, they usually have something that requires a, either a lot of their time and attention, or like you said, they gotta travel, they gotta go to conventions, they gotta go to sales meetings and things of that nature. Um, and so it's the trade off. You're trading off some of the the luxuries of being around a woman or being around your family. It's a sacrifice from his perspective. Um, but you also have to take into consideration if a woman's dating a guy that's wealthy, I'm talking hundreds of millions of dollars, etc. He's a celebrity or he, he got, you know, trust fund money or, you know, that type of situation. Imagine what his sta his standards are going to be for his woman. You know, like, so just off, off that alone, the look, exactly. what he expects out of a woman, like these women are not just going to get in the mansion and just eat and let themselves go. Uh, <laughs> the man she should feel go. the same way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, so, exactly. so that increased income or that, that status, uh, it comes with expectations. And, uh, and that's what Kevin Samuels, rest in, rest in peace, was really trying to get women to understand. They bro. don't understand it, bro. You can't let yourself go around here. And I ain't no millionaire. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can't let yourself go around here or you got to go. Because as a man, I can't let myself go with, with when it comes to paying bills, when it comes True. to taking care of the home. So you can't let yourself go either around here. And I only make 35000 a year. And guess, what? and guess what? They don't, you know, let yourself go financially. Hey, they don't want to hear your excuses. They ain't they trying don't. to hear what your reason or rationale is. They but don't. just think about this. Right. If for women that think, you know, this is hard or difficult for a man demanding, you know, this stuff out of you or this kind of thing. Hey, try making it with Mr. Low standards there. Yeah, how that works out. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. It, <laughs> it, the more you get up in the in the financial ladder, the more uh standards you have like terry was saying like no we not millionaires but being a top six percent guy in, in earnings i don't want a a, a woman that's uh just a, a um a four or a five i'm sorry i work too hard <laughs> to be walking around with a four. that's 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 80 pounds 100 pounds overweight like I, I, i've been working too hard for that like i need a woman that's worked just as hard on her looks and her mentality as I have with being able to provide and be a good man or a good husband to a woman. I want the same, I want to see the same type of effort because I'm that, I'm I'm in a different bracket. So right. you go and get you, if you don't want to do nothing with yourself, go get you a guy making $50,000. That's where you should be at, right around there. But don't <laughs> complain about what that what the guys that's up there want from a woman because it's gonna be a lot different than yeah. than the you know the regular guy. So it is what it is. Well, good luck uh finding that wealthy man, ladies. That's gonna, you know, according to the pandering I've heard, he's gonna do what you want, he's gonna <laughs> feel how you want him to feel. And he's gonna meet all your expectations of a man. So good luck with out, that, man. I'm getting nauseous <laughs> with this nonsense. <laughs> Stomach ache. Uh, all right, man. Looking like we up against the clock, y'all. Uh, we about to take a quick break. Uh, when we come back, we're gonna be getting into tonight's topic: a mountain of excuses. Uh, y'all tuned into the Hold a Husband podcast. We'll be back in a minute. Hi, 
I'm relationship coach and author Terry Duran, and I am pleased to announce that my book, It's Not That Complicated, is finally available as an audiobook. So if you don't like to read or you just don't have time to read a paperback book, this audiobook is perfect for you. You can listen to it while you're in your car, while you're at work, etc. In the book, I break down how husband material men think and operate in regards to sex, love, and relationships, and I provide real quality insight on how husband material men approach dating. The audiobook is available on audible.com and on iTunes. All you have to do is go to one of the websites and search for my name, Terry Duran. Go download your copy today. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Hold a Husband podcast. Tonight's episode is titled Mountain of Excuses. Uh, and we're going to be talking about the problems that men and women bring into relationships. Uh, so I wanted to start the conversation off by the de- using the definition of the word excuse. Uh, an excuse is an attempt to lessen the blame for an offense, meaning someone has to actually have done something wrong in order for them to be making an excuse. Um, when I try to, uh, I find my own social media and my comments a lot, whenever I'm trying to provide an explanation or the reasoning behind certain behavior, women will call it an excuse as if a man is wrong for thinking or feeling whatever I was talking about. And I, I think there needs to be a differentiation between the two. Uh, so I wanted to ask both of y'all to start with, what do y'all feel or how would you explain the difference between an excuse and a reason? Um, uh, oh, a reason the definition is like an explanation for something. Um, but the, the problem I'm having with it is that can they be the same? That's the problem I'm having with it, right? Can a reason and an excuse be the same thing? Yeah, can it be the same thing? Like, yeah, you know, can you can you mix the two? And I, I believe you can. Because if you're talking about, you know, why a man did something, right? Um, why he might have cheated. He can give a reason where he say, well, my wife wasn't giving me sex. That's a reason, right? Um, it could also it be, be an, excuse. an excuse to do something that he know is wrong. So, uh, you know, it, it all depends on the situation, I guess. Real thin line, real thin yeah, line. Yeah, yeah. Because I can give you a reason. I can give you a reason why I went this way driving, right? But I don't know. It's tough. <laughs> it's tough. Yeah, to I, I, I mean, but see, the, the 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 to me, an explanation is providing the the logic and the reasoning, mm-hmm. the thought pattern, or the decision making. When you when you're addressing, this is what the decision was, and this is why they chose that action. Because when, I, when I'm talking about like the example that you gave in the cheating, yeah, a, a man can, can say that the reason that he cheated was because he wasn't getting sex. But then you can ask some follow-up questions. What did he try to do to address the problem? Did he communicate? Did he discuss it? Like, so if he'd been trying for 18 months to discuss it or fix it, and she didn't make no changes, then now it provides me with understanding how he ended up at that, that decision. Um, now, whether you, Un, or actually understanding or you know um show any forgiveness that's up to you but that would be the differentiation but to me what about you jay well i say a reason is you're giving an explanation a rationale of why or that you did something right an excuse you're trying to rationalize what you did you know yeah it's a reason but you're trying to rationalize something like for example, hey, you know, you be, you know, you with a woman. Let's just say, you know, like we saw about earlier, she let herself go. Games, hey, can you get can you get in the gym? Hey, lose this weight, and she's like, well, I can't get in the gym because X, Y, Z. You should just accept me as I am. I would say that's an excuse you're trying to rationalize, you know, letting yourself go. Okay, I, I, that's fair. You know, um, you know, you try to lessen the blame with an excuse, like, yeah. Uh, and maybe and maybe with that it's like you know how people try to turn things on you Mm -hmm. and be like well yeah i did this but you it's because you did the same thing because it could could, yeah that's that's deflecting though that's you you making it 
you you sending criticism this way and I'm making it bounce off me and, and point it back at you. Right. That yep. to me that's deflection. That's trying to avoid providing the explanation or the the, the reason that the person is asking for. Yep. But you're right. I, I mean, the, the the problem with these is these things come up in the heat of an argument or a mm -hmm. disagreement. You know what I mean? Where okay. tempers flare and body language is usually very animated or can be hostile. Um, so yeah, most people aren't having these thoughts and these discussions at the time where they should be having them, right? right. Um, yeah. So so it can it can be very difficult. Um, but one well, thing that, that I so real quick, think about this. Mm -hmm. So I think that I think that if now that I'm sitting here thinking about it, if you provide a reason and you're taking accountability for it. And you know what I'm saying? And you putting accountability on you and That's you just difference. explaining your reason. Cool. All right. I can go with that as a reason over an excuse. An excuse is taking no accountability. You could be saying the same yeah. thing, right? You could be saying the exact same thing. Well, I, I did it because I, 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 you not, you not having sex with me led me to doing something that I knew was wrong and I was wrong with what I did. I know, but you know, admitting the wrong to get sex. You gotta yeah, admit it. I've been trying to get sex, you know, and, and I was wrong. I shouldn't have did it. I know I was wrong. Cool. Now you gave a reason and you took accountability. Now you say, hey man, look, I, I went out, I, I had sex, but you wasn't giving me no sex. So you you pushed me to do it. You you forced me to do it because you <laughs> wasn't giving me sex. Like no accountability in it to me is an excuse for your behavior mm -hmm. to lessen the blame and take the blame off of you and put it on somebody else. So that's where I would differentiate See, the two: is if you're accountable mm -hmm. or not for your yeah. You, you got to start with that, that ownership of the fuck up. You know what I'm saying? Like, look, yeah. this is what I did. Yeah. I'm willing to pay the consequences, the fine, the yeah. whatever whatever penalty is. Like, as a man, when you're, oh, that's part of the accountability for men, right? Um, just in society in general, I think men are forced to be accountable for their decision making. Um, and in and, oh, and a lot of cases, um, even when I, I see a situation where a woman is in the wrong, or a woman is the cause of a problem, um, I'll, I'll see women trying to, be, change the facts trying to change the situation to find a way to either make the woman not accountable or mm -hmm. to make it like uh, y'all are both accountable y'all both in the wrong type situation mm -hmm. uh so yeah. that's that's one of the thing that that i find annoying on social media uh every time uh, we have a situation where a woman does something so i can understand why women uh on your post or on your page say that you're making excuses i can understand it better now that i'm thinking about it because from a man's point of view they don't think like a man they right. think like women so mm -hmm. as a man when you provide a reason let's so say somebody cheated you posted on your page and you like yeah but you know she wasn't giving them sex and he tried or whatever the case to them they are hearing an excuse from a man not understanding the rationale behind it like, hey, man, right. you know that this man is connected to you and he needs sex, whatever the case. Not like you shift and blame because you aren't actually in it. You just providing an a, a explanation for why he might have done what he did. That's yeah. where I think they, they um, confuse the two. Look, you know what, SD, I, I think when they're commenting, right, they're talking based on how they feel. They're they, talking they feel. with their emotions, yeah. right? How they feel. He's pushing his post. He provides context. And he's providing reason and rationale. So he's talking yeah. from a place of logic and they're talking from a place of emotion. And I think that's disconnect there. That's every time, uh, it's, most it's times. Right. And that's why it's hard for them to, it's hard for a lot of women. And this is what I also learned on social media. It's hard for a lot of women to, to remove themselves and remove mm -hmm. their feelings and emotions away from something that don't have nothing to do with them. And right. actually think about it from a man's point of view. That's tough for women to do because they're so driven and guided by their emotions what? and feelings that a lot of them just don't do that. So, right. 
Well, as All right. men, I, 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 I have one. Oh, go ahead. I have an example that uh, recently uh, I, I found an old post that I put up a couple years back okay. about the guy that made the spreadsheet uh, on his woman not giving him sex. Okay, uh, yeah, I saw it. I saw a couple people repost it, so it got recirculated it ar- around. Uh, a lot of women. Even though this man took the time to actually document all the excuses, yeah. a lot of them were BS. Woman coming home, getting in the shower, all, all you know, would make anybody suspicious, right? There are women that were saying things like, he, he could have just talked to her about it. Or, 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 or like, that they're criticizing him for yeah. documenting yeah. the excuses. And it's like, well, damn, men don't get the at least the benefit of the doubt that they attempted to talk to the woman to communicate the problem first. Right. Like, yeah. like they just act like the man just was was quiet about his his desire for sex not being met, even though he got a list of 30 excuses that this woman made. You know what I mean? Like, so right. it's situations like that where women will just go out of their way to make it seem like the woman is in it, didn't didn't have no contri- contribution to the, the situation at hand. Yeah. Um, you know, I seen some other comments on your page, and I screenshot a lot of them because I'm gonna I'm do my own thing if I don't forget. But a lot of them saying, "Yeah, but he gotta be doing something to for her <laughs> not to want to have sex." Like it can't just like women just don't change if they marry. Now I can't tell you how many married men that I personally know, and I have mm-hmm. done the surveys, and I'm gonna put that as a part of it, where most of the married men. That I know personally, and, and and through these surveys said I don't get nearly as much sex as I got when we were still dating, not even Facts. close. Guys at the job telling me they ain't had no head in two three years from their wife. Ooh, they feel like, they whoa, 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 whoa. like time yeah, time but, time but, but what we know <laughs> is the, no bro. I'm telling you, <laughs> and, and so and so and these here most of these here dudes I'm talking about are white guys. You know what I mean? Because most of the guys I work with are white. But um, and, and the and the women will still find a way to blame the men, no matter what the situation is. You know what I'm saying? So you 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 got to really understand the, the women, man, to to see what's going on out here, because it don't matter what it is that we do or don't do, it's gonna be our fault. With a lot of women, not all of them, it's a lot of um, rational logical thinking women that can see it for what it is and, and comment it but it's also a lot of them out here that's completely unfair and hypocritical those are the women i yeah. want to stay away from yeah you got to be able to, to uh to point those women out um but but i think uh well one thing about it though i don't spend my energy trying to provide explanations for the men that are not quality men I don't know how bums operate. I don't understand how a dude can not be focused on providing for himself and his family. So I don't even attempt to try to explain about those type of men. Mm. I focus on men that are operating where we from, where we doing all right, but we we have the ambition to keep pushing for more. We're in a position where we can take care of ourselves and our kids and live a comfortable lifestyle without crime and you know what I'm saying and and I, some of the extremes that I see other other guys go through um but the thing about it is men like us when we get criticism yep. if you tell me I'm fucking up on something or I'm doing something that's hurting my cause I'm all ears I'm right. receptive to improving or fixing a problem no matter who it's coming from you know what I'm saying like and I I, I don't understand why so many women are they reject it, advice that is intended to help them improve their situation. Yeah, well, think about a, a lot of them just feel like they're above reproach, which is why a lot of them just aren't in the best of situations when, when we really look at it here. Yeah, I mean, because when you look at the situations a lot of women are in, a lot of them don't reflect and, and figure out how their attitude contributed how the experiences that the men that dated them contribute to the, to why they single at 38 or 40 or whatever the case right. may be. And when, and I, it, you can figure it out within a couple conversations why we'll yep. be unpleasant today. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Cause they show that they show the hand. A lot of people don't think nothing wrong with them. You know what I mean? A lot of people can't help themselves. She, she's so, fine. Yeah. It don't, it don't take two years <laughs> and a baby. It don't take two years and a baby to figure out this fool is, is they ain't got it all together. 
Like, you can figure that out in a couple conversations, man. You know, I done had yeah. conversations like that where I be listening to some of these women and I be like, I see why this fool here is single and can't get a man. <laughs> Matter of fact, yeah. I gotta go walk, I gotta go walk my goldfish. I'll call you back. Because this is yeah. nuts. So but you it the also the opposite. Like when you see a woman and she's in a healthy relationship. You can you can a couple conversation a few minutes of talking yeah, to her right. you can you can see why she's wiped up. Yeah. You you can yeah. just yeah. adjust the way that they receive information. Their overall perspective on men in relationships in general is not from a like I said earlier. It's like most women when it, they they hit the dating scene in bad faith, like they're 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 focused on something negative. They're looking for some looking for a reason to curve a dude instead of how men approach it where we looking for something positive in a woman in most cases. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's crazy because how do you expect to have a healthy relationship if you're going into it in bad faith, looking for something to be wrong here, going into it? How do you expect to have a good, healthy relationship? You, they won't. That's the million dollar question, <laughs> ain't it? I mean, oh, yeah. we're not shocked that they're not getting the results right. that they want, but... Yeah. Them women that say, yeah, but you can do all that and still cheat. Uh Uh-uh, X, get out of here. You're done. You're done. (laughs) Because anybody can still cheat. But just the mindset is telling you that it don't matter what you do. She always going to be side-eyeing you or expecting something to go wrong and and, and holding back and all this here. Don't want to be bothered with it. I mean, listen, if you're going into the dating world with a negative disposition, and you're going to have a hard time, period. Yeah, men. I mean, but yeah, no true. Question. Now, now the react, the facts of it is, most dating situations are not going to result in marriage. marriage. Like that's the reality of dating. But you, but you're right. You can't. A man can't approach oh, every woman thinking this, thinking something negative because that's going to come out in how you move and how you operate. Like yeah. the dating is about learning. You're figuring out whether you're compatible with this person or not. And we talk about it all the time that men develop the skill set to become very proficient at doing that, where a lot of women don't have to. A lot of women just answer questions that guys ask them. And, and you know what I'm saying? Like, my favorite color is this. My, they don't really ask in, in, intriguing questions. They don't, they don't do the things that men have to do to, uh, to determine compatibility. Yeah. And it, yeah. it reflects in their dating results. Yeah. And you know what, man, being and I was saying this the other day, man, being out here and going through the whole phase for all of those years, it taught me how to read women. It taught me how to understand women. It taught me, you know, how not to behave, how to behave and all of these here that what I like and what I don't really like and what I won't do. Like getting a degree. Yeah, yeah. like you know, and and the crazy part about that now is that when you when you actually speak on those things that you actually learned and why you don't want a specific type of woman, you're shamed and insulted for it as a man. <laughs> but they don't do that to each other. They they high five <laughs> each other. They be like, "Yeah, girl, leave that fool alone." That's right. No mama's boys or something, right? <laughs> but right. yeah, but when it's uh, when it, when a man do it, it's a, it's a little different. But you know, it is what it is. Learn to deal with it. Yeah, I mean, as a man, you. you you have to just accept certain things that come with it. And from what, from what I've observed, or they're just my perspective on it, as a man, you're going to have some type of issues with a woman. She's going to be unhappy with something you do, something the way that you do it. You just got to make sure that she her mentality and she's submissive enough to where she respects your leadership, that y'all can actually have discussions about the disagreements and y'all can work through the issues. Like uh, the the biggest issue that I see with relationships is that's not fair. You're not able to re- actually resolve issues with a lot of these women because they passive aggressive. Instead of talking to you about it, she's in her only fan, only friends, only slandering fan. you. Or I mean, I mean you, her Wait a only uh, a group chat. Yeah, you mean a whole different her, yeah, turn? Like, what's the the, the <laughs> thing where you, where you post your story where oh where you're close friends? That's oh, close friends. Right. Yeah, she's, like she's oh, in I her close what's her name? friends. Nurse Nurse Bay was talking about. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she's in her close friends, discussing getting gassed up in a negative way usually, um, and so the, that's where you see all that kind of that that 
compound problems in relationships where women go to their friends and come back and just make the situation worse. I got you. And uh, and the crazy part is they go into their single friends. They're not going to the ones that's mad or in a, in a healthy relationship. They go into their single friends, and a lot of times that single friend is lonely and miserable. And like they say, misery loves company. So she's giving her bad advice to begin with, and she's acting on it like sad. That's the sad part. It happens a lot, man. But let me ask you, let me ask y'all this: Why do y'all think it's so hard for women to call out other women when their thinking and behavior is problematic? Why do you think it's so hard for women to hold each other accountable? They'll get called to pick me, um, and yeah. I think that women care more. Um, I know a lot of my female followers um, that used to comment in my comments now they'll only DM because they don't want to uh, have a confrontation with the the chicks in my comments. Um, so oh, wow. they they are they're they try to avoid the confrontation with those with the other women because they're such a minority. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. A yeah. lot of times, if a woman posts a crazy comment, she's gonna get all kind of women that like it and reply, and kind of it's it snowballs into yeah, a girl. toxic kind of situation. Yeah. yeah. So the women that actually get it really recognize that, and they avoid those kind of situations yep. on social media. No, the, you know what it is? A lot of these women want to uphold this sister code thing, right? Rather than holding other women accountable, they'll just uphold the sister code instead. So for example, let's say a woman's out here with three kids, three different baby dads, and has a fourth kid with a fourth man. She's not gonna say, damn, why are you having all these kids with all these different men? She, a lot of times they go egg them on. Yes, girl, high five, throw them a baby shower and everything, rather than calling her out on it. So uh, that's the problem. Yeah. And you, like you said, when anybody talks against this, they get called to pick me. Um, I don't know if y'all familiar with uh, Sharzad Ali, um, yeah, you know, the late Kevin Samuels used to used to reference her a lot, and she pushed back against a lot of behavior back in the '80s and '90s, and she got a lot of pushback for this stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I see. Look at what they do to our girl. Uh, the yeah. accountability, our girl. Da uh, yeah, she, yeah she's, she's, uh, when women hate on her all the time. You know what I mean? And uh -huh. she just posted recently. Yeah. There was a whole Facebook group dedicated to hate yeah. on to her. You know what I mean? Yeah. Didn't, like, hasn't so, she, so hasn't she received death threats as well? Yeah, she has. <laughs> she posted them. Talked about yeah. her mom who had passed and everything. Like, listen, wow. these are, these are, these are our women. That's the crazy part. It ain't, yeah. it ain't, you know what I'm saying? These other races of women doing group. this stuff. Yeah, this is black a women doing it. So it's it's crazy, man, when you actually hold women accountable or 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 say something that these here women don't like, man. It is crazy the backlash that or not even something that they don't like, but like um something that kind of favors a man. Hey ladies, you know, if if, if you buy the pop, if he buy the movie tickets, you buy the popcorn. Sometimes you take him out. Oh, somebody please pick her. <laughs> yeah. Don't you want to get picked up? Like, the object, like, like this yeah, is what man. this is what baffles my mind. The object out here, all these here women want to get picked, but that's the, why they're they shaking their ass. This it's showing how cute group they are. Wants to get picked, being as combative as possible, as un un uh, pleasant to be around as possible, as as, as unmodest as possible. Like it's not working for you. But they'll go and insult the woman that's actually uh, uh, doing the things that men find favorable. And then they'll try to make excuses about, hey, well, all the hoes is getting married. Well, how many hoes you know that's married? Well, five. Five? It's 68 million women that's married. You talking about five? You talking five about less than one percent. Come on, man. That's why, that's why yeah, man. listen to it. It's hard. It's hard to help them, you know. Um, like I said, anytime you try to do a deep dive, have critical thinking, or have a real discussion about what they're doing that is causing men to fall out of love, causing men that once wanted to be with them to change his mind, they don't really want to have those conversations. They they'd rather focus on the fuck boys and what they do wrong, you know, and and the men and spend all their time and energy on the men that they don't want. Exactly. And, and don't get it wrong. Those men don't. Those men do all types of things out here to to women. I'm with y'all 100, ladies, because I was one of them. 
I get it. <laughs> but when you are older, right, and you looking for a certain type of man, you have you have got to to change the way that you think in order to get that different type of man. You have Thanks. to. You know what I mean? Focusing on the 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 hoes that that you was dating and was playing games with you in your twenties, it's not gonna do you no good. It's not. Nobody's got sympathy for you out here. Thanks. So, all right, man. Look like we up against the clock, y'all. We about to get up out of here, man. Before we go, uh, I want to give another shout out to my man, Brother Soul Productions, for keeping us nice with our background music. Uh, I want to remind y'all to continue supporting the podcast through our Cash App and our PayPal uh jsd man i appreciate y'all linking up with me so we can get another episode knocked out uh and shout out super super bowl mvp mahomes okay. uh finna come through in the clutch uh this has been another episode of the hold a husband podcast y'all thanks for tuning in peace